Hello everyone, here we are. We're going to get going here with Jeremiah 24. So let's go. After Jehoiakim, or Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah and the officials, the skilled workers and the artisans of Judah were carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Lord showed me, Jeremiah, two baskets of figs placed in front of the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like those that ripen early. The other basket had very bad figs, so bad they could not be eaten. Then the Lord asked me, what do you see, Jeremiah? Figs, I answered. The good ones are very good, but the bad ones are so bad they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Like these good figs, I regard as good the exiles from Judah, whom I sent away from this place to the land of the Babylonians. My eyes will watch over them for their good, and I will bring them back to this land. See, God's punishment always has mercy. He's not just a raging, crazy God just stomping out people. He's punishing his children, and he's telling them, you can avoid this punishment if you obey me. But they didn't, okay? So punishment came. But he always has mercy, and he always has leaves time for them to repent, okay? Always. He keeps extending the hand of repentance to them. But when they don't repent, then the punishment comes, okay? So when you hear someone say, oh, that God of the Old Testament, I don't want him for my God, you tell them that God is a father, a true father who loved his people and always watched over them, but he did punish for their sacrifice of their children in the fire. And I think when you say that to them, I think that will bring them up short because most people don't realize that this punishment came from idol worship that led them all the way up to throwing their babies in bowls of fire. Okay, so just explain it to them. Every time the Lord was angry like this, he gave them a chance to repent. He extended the arms of mercy but they didn't repent. So this is a father punishing a nation that he nurtured and brought up, which is his right. So I'm gonna read that again. My eyes will watch over them for their good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. See, this is the stuff that people don't notice, this good stuff right here, this love. They just hear all the crazy, you know, punishment, and they're like, oh, I don't need that. Well, unfortunately, we get it whether we like it or not. We get punishment. Because um, a good father punishes his children, disciplines his children, okay, which is punishment. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God, which he said from the very beginning. For they will return to me with all their heart. But like the bad figs, which are so bad they cannot be eaten, says the Lord, so will I deal with Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials, and the survivors from Jerusalem. Whether they remain in this land or live in Egypt, I will make them abhorrent and an offense to all the kingdoms of the earth. A reproach and a byword, a curse and an object of ridicule wherever I banish them. I'll send the sword, famine, and plague against them until they're destroyed from the land I gave to them and their ancestors. Jeremiah 25. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. 
So Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of Judah and to all those living in Jerusalem, for 23 years, from the 13th year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me. And I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And though the Lord has sent all his servants, the prophets, to you again and again, you have not listened or paid any attention. They said, turn now, each of you, from your evil ways and your evil practices, and you can stay in this land the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever and ever. Do not follow other gods to serve and worship them. Do not arouse my anger with what your hands have made. Then I will not harm you. But you did not listen to me, declares the Lord, and you've aroused my anger with what your hands have made, and you've brought harm to yourselves. Idol worship will bring harm to you and to those around you. Therefore, the Lord Almighty says this, because you've not listened to my words, I will summon all the peoples of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now that doesn't mean that Nebuchadnezzar knows this Lord, knows this God. It just means that everybody's a servant of the Lord. He created him and he's going to use him, declares the Lord. And I'll bring them against his land, this land, and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations, I'll completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and everlasting ruin. I'll banish from the I'll banish the, from them the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, the sound of millstones, and the light of the lamp. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And that's what happened. We read about it. But when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation. And we heard about that too. We heard about him saying, look, I punished through Isaiah. He said, I punished you in Babylon. Now I'm going to punish Babylon. But when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians for their guilt, declares the Lord. So the Lord can use someone to punish you. And when you're punished, she'll turn and punish the one that punished you. Because we're all his creatures, right? But when the 70 years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians, for their guilt, declares the Lord, and will make it desolate forever. I'll bring on that land all the things I've spoken against it, all that are written in this book and prophesied by Jeremiah against all the nations, they themselves will be enslaved by many nations and great kings. I will repay them according to their deeds and the work of their hands. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me. Take from my hand this cup filled with the wine of my wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. That's what the Lord just said to Jeremiah. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad because of the sword I will send among them. This is terrifying, this part. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom he sent me drink it. Now that's probably not a literal cup. That's probably the prophesy, the prophecy of the Lord coming from Jeremiah's mouth. And probably it was furious. Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a ruin and an object of horror and scorn, a curse as they are today. And then destruction came. They were prophesied to. They were given a chance. They didn't heed the chance. They didn't take it. Destruction came. And that was Jeremiah's job, to let them know everything that was in the Lord's heart. Pharaoh king of Egypt, his attendants, his officials, and all his people, and all the foreign people there, all the kings of Uz, all the kings of the Philistines, those of Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the people left at Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and Ammon, all the kings of Tyre and Sidon, the kings of the coastlands across the sea, Dedan, Tima, Buz, and all who are in distant, distant places, 
all the kings of Arabia and all the kings of the foreign people who live in the wilderness, all the kings of Zimri, Elam, and Media, Medea, and all the kings of the north, near and far, one after the other, all the kingdoms on the face of the earth. And after all of them, the king of Shishak will drink it too. Okay, so this is a bounding fury. This is everybody's going to drink the cup of wrath for one reason or another. Then tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, drink, get drunk and vomit and fall to rise no more because of the sword I will send among you. But if they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink, tell them this is what the Lord Almighty says, you must drink it. See, I'm beginning to bring disaster on the city that bears my name. Meaning, look, I'm, I'm starting to, to bring disaster on Jerusalem and Judah. And will you indeed go unpunished? In other words, if I'm punishing my own, how much more you? You will not go unpunished, for I'm calling down a sword on all who live on the earth, declares the Lord Almighty. This scripture that we just read, verse 27, 28, and 29, has been used in regards to America. There's a prophecy by someone called A.A. A. Allen, and it was in 1954. And this prophecy, this scripture is in his prophecy. And in his vision, he saw the end of the earth. And I almost put it up on my feed. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. It's a little frightening. And it's a little, um, it's a little early, I think, to put up a prophecy like that. I, I don't want to be responsible for terrifying anybody. But his vision, um, and, and you know, he, of course, uh, was a tent revivalist. He had tent meetings back in the, I guess, 40s and 50s. And so, of course, there's a lot of bad press about him, too. You know, calling him a drunk, calling him this, calling him that. And, you know, God can use the mouth of a donkey. So no matter what the vessel is, prophecy is prophecy, visions are visions, okay? Some of them, yes, if they don't line up with scripture, they're false, Okay, that's how you test what's true, is you line it up with scripture. The scripture you know, you know, as we read this, you get a line on what's true. And when you hear something, hold it up against the scripture. If it doesn't line up, get rid of it. Because you can always see that little grain of sand that isn't proper in a, in a vision or a prophecy. There's always something that will show you that it's false, okay? All right, so here we go. I'm going to read that again. Then tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, drink, get drunk and vomit and fall to rise no more because of the sword I'll send among you. But if they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink, tell them this is what the Lord Almighty says. You must drink it. Now, I'm assuming this is giving them uh, a word that they don't want to receive. And the Lord is saying, you tell them they receive, they better receive it because this is what's coming. You must drink it. See, I'm beginning to bring disaster on the city that bears my name. And will you indeed go unpunished? You'll not go unpunished, for I'm calling down a sword on all who live on the earth, declares the Lord Almighty. Now, prophesy all these words against them and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high. He will thunder from his holy dwelling and roar mightily against his land. He'll shout like those who... Tread the grapes, shout against all who live on the earth. The tumult will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord will bring charges against the nations. Against the nations. He'll bring judgment on all mankind and put the wicked to the sword, declares the Lord. Sounds like Revelation talk. This is what the Lord Almighty says. But remember, I've told you over and over, one scripture can minister to lot, it can prophesy, minister to lots of different situations without ever losing its base meaning. Okay, so it's talking about this time, but it also has echoes of the end times. Uh, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. Man, I bear witness to that right now. 
At that time, those slain by the Lord will be everywhere, from one end of the earth to the other. They will not be mourned or gathered up or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. That is revelation. That is said in Revelation. Weep and wail, you shepherds. Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. And that would be to pastors, reverends, anybody who is a shepherd. Anybody who's shepherding anybody, okay? Roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock. For your time to be slaughtered has come. You will fall like the best of the rams. The shepherds will have nowhere to flee. The leaders of the flock, no place to escape. Hear the cry of the shepherds, the wailing of the leaders of the flock, for the Lord is destroying their pasture. The peaceful meadows will be laid waste because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Like a lion, he will leave his lair and their land will become desolate because of the sword of the oppressor and because of the Lord's fierce anger. And his fierce anger is driving the sword of the oppressor. And that was to those false pastors, preachers, prophets, shepherds that we heard about in Jeremiah 23 at the very end, okay? Jeremiah 26, early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says, stand in the courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Okay, so you go to worship one morning, and you walk into the courtyard, there's Jeremiah, okay? Tell them everything I command you, do not omit a word. Perhaps they'll listen, and each will turn from their evil ways. Then I'll relent and not inflict on them the disaster I was planning because of the evil they've done. So once again, this is not a crazy God who's just killing everybody. He continuously stretches out his arms and gives them a moment to repent. They just don't. This say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me and follow my law, which I've set before you, and if you don't listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, like Jeremiah here, whom I've sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I'll make this house like Shiloh and this city a curse among all the nations of the earth. The priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priests, the prophets, and all the people seized him and said, You must die. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shiloh and this city will be desolate and deserted? And all the people crowded around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places at the entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and all the people, this man should be sentenced to death because he has prophesied against this city. You've heard it with your own ears. Then Jeremiah said to all the officials and all the people, the Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and the city, all the things you've heard. Now reform your ways and your actions and obey the Lord your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he's pronounced against you. As for me, I'm in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. Be assured, however that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, this man should not be sentenced to death. He's spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Quick flip. Some of the elders of the land stepped forward and said to the entire assembly of the people, of people, Micah of Moresheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah, king of Judah. He told all the people of Judah, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill a mound overgrown with thickets. So one of these elders has stepped forward and reminded them of another prophecy that was similar or that was the same. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, or anyone else in Judah put him to death? Did not Hezekiah fear the Lord and seek his favor? 
And did not the Lord relent so that he did not bring the disaster he pronounced against them? We are about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. Now Uriah, son of Shemaiah from Kiriath-Jerim, was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord. He prophesied the same things against this city and this land as Jeremiah did. When King Jehoiakim and all his officers and officials heard his words, the king was determined to put him to death. But Uriah heard of it and fled in fear to Egypt. See, we're not always called to be martyred, people. We can run, okay? It's not always like the most noble thing to be caught and martyred. You want to live another day to prophesy and tell people it's, it's love for people. You want to live another day so you can give the word of the Lord to the people. But Uriah heard of it and fled in fear to Egypt. King Jehoiakim, however, sent Elnathan, son of Akbor, to Egypt along with some other men. They brought Uriah out of Egypt and took him to King Jehoiakim, who had him struck down with a sword and his body thrown into the burial place of the common people. And then sometimes you get caught. Furthermore, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, supported Jeremiah, and so he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. Okay, let's do this one because it's short. This is Jeremiah 27. Early in the reign of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord said to me. Make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. Then send word to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon through the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them a message for their masters and say, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Tell this to your masters, with my great power and outstretched arm, I made the earth and its people and the animals that are on it, and I give it to anyone I please. In other words, I made all things, and it's mine to give. Now, I will give all your countries into the hands of my servant, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All nations will serve him and his son and his grandson until the time for his land comes, then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. If, however, any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke, I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plague, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. We're suffering a plague right now, aren't we? We don't have sword and famine yet, and I hope we don't. I hope we don't, but we do have plague. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of Babylon. They prophesy lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your lands. I will banish you and you will perish. But if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. Interesting. I gave the same message to Zedekiah, king of Judah. I said, bow your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, serve him and his people, and you will live. Now remember, Jeremiah is standing there with a big yoke on his neck. You know, God loves a picture, right? Jesus spoke in parables. Lots of pictures. You know, in sales, I do sales for a living, and in sales, we're constantly painting pictures to people to promote whatever it is we're asking them to purchase, okay? Of course, I'm in real estate, so it's not quite that simple, but even in the capacity that I'm in real estate, we are painting pictures of homes, of cultures around the home, you know, that the city, the town, I mean, it's constant picture painting so that people can think, okay? So he's got Jeremiah there with a big yoke on his neck, and he's saying these words to them. So if you serve, you'll live, okay? You'll be able to stay, stay in your land and till the land, etc. okay? Why will you and your people die by the sword, famine, and plague with which the Lord has threatened any nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? 
Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, you will not serve the king of Babylon for their prophesying lies to you. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. They are prophesying lies in my name. Therefore, I will banish you and you will perish, both you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Then I said to the priests and all these people, this is what the Lord says. Do not listen to the prophets who say, very soon now the articles from the Lord's house will be brought back from Babylon. They are prophesying lies to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and you will live. Why should this city become a ruin? So the Lord knows the might of the king of Babylon and he's trying, he's working something out here. He's saying, save yourself, okay? If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the articles remaining in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and Jerusalem not be taken to Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says about the pillars, the bronze sea, S-E-A. Remember that big bowl with all the water and the bulls coming out that was created in the temple in Zion? Um the bronze sea, the movable stands, and the other articles that are left in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he carried Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, along with all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about the things that are left in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem. They will be taken to Babylon, and they will remain until the day I come for them, declares the Lord. So the Lord's going to do it all. Then I will bring them back and restore them to this place. I can't imagine any more security than having the Lord tell you the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. All they have to do is do what the Lord is saying. He's clearly got a plan, okay? Now, once again, um, I find myself saying, you know, I remember when Hezekiah showed the people from Babylon the treasures in, in the uh, palace, and I remember them going into exile. Sometimes I feel a little bit like, where is this exact thing taking place? This, what we're reading, where does it sit in the chronological line, the timeline, okay? All right, well, that would probably take some study and... I'm either going to do it or I'm not going to do it. It's probably a pretty deep study to try to put everything in order. So I'm going to stick with what I've been saying, which is let's pull out of this the character of the Lord, because that's really what I'm here for. I just want you to know the Lord. I want you to know the God you're serving from beginning to end, okay, in, in his word. So I want you to not worry so much about the exact timeline of things. I know Isaiah came before Jeremiah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the reason I questioned Sodom and Gomorrah being in Jerusalem last night was simply because I remember that it was in the time of Abraham and Lot and they had not conquered the lands of Canaan yet. But, um, you know, so sometimes there's just things that make me, you know, I try to stay on track and not get sidetracked in my brain while I'm reading to you about like, when was this or what, you know, I want us to just listen to the Lord because a lot of these words, all these words are eternal and all of them can be pulled out and applied to, to areas in our own lives. So that's my focus. Um, you know, if I feel led to sit down and figure anything out beyond Isaiah came before Jeremiah, I will do that. And certainly if you have questions, just inbox me, okay? I love you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we'll start with Jeremiah 28. Okay? Love you. Bye-bye.